My name is David Swan, and I'm an industry solutions manager here in Redlands, California. Joining me today is Dave Johnson, who's an application prototype specialist with the Application Prototype Lab, again, here in Redlands. We want to welcome you all to today's live training seminar. During today's seminar, we want to explain how imagery can take its place amongst other information types in an enterprise information system. To achieve that, what we're going to be doing is interlacing two demonstrations amongst slides that are going to illustrate the advantages of an enterprise image information system. At any point, we'd welcome questions that you can submit online. Although it's not my intention to provide a full background on imagery, it may be useful to summarize why imagery is useful. For most GIS users, imagery provides a source of context, a useful backdrop to orient our work. This visualization context has been brought into the consumer mainstream with free, search-oriented consumer viewers like Google Earth. This tends to disguise the much more important use of imagery, which is as a fundamental source of geospatial information. If you track the origins of a vector feature, more likely than not, it was originally derived from imagery, typically through digitizing, but increasingly through automated or semi-automated feature extraction. Imagery also forms a data source for analysis or assessment. So we can use imagery to find and identify features, often as a precursor to extracting features, but sometimes merely to count or assess. We can use different time slices of imagery so that we can spot changes that might have occurred. And we can further refine the extraction of information from imagery by conducting multispectral analysis or other advanced image processing techniques. But above all, we want to integrate imagery with other geospatial information, preferably in an enterprise context, so that we can gain benefits throughout our organization. So how do we bring imagery into an enterprise context? Put another way, what would an enterprise image information system look like? To answer those questions, it's perhaps useful to think about how geographic information has been brought into an enterprise context, something that ESRI's users have done very successfully over the last 10 years or so. Can our experiences help us bring imagery into this same context? You're probably familiar with this component view of an enterprise geographic information system. So we think about the creation, maintenance, and management of geographic information in a database context, the geodatabase. In the enterprise, this then allows for the central management of geographic information and its subsequent dissemination throughout the enterprise. We think about the processes that we're going to run against the geodatabase, the geoprocessing. Using Model Builder, a component of the desktop, the individual geoprocessing functions can be connected together into models. These models capture our organization's geographic knowledge or tradecraft. These models can also be disseminated throughout the organization. And this is going to grow and enhance our enterprise knowledge. Finally, we think about the visualization of the resulting maps and globes, geovisualization, into a variety of clients. You've also probably seen this type of diagram before that shows a services view of an enterprise GIS with its three tiers of author, serve, and use. This view places GIS into the context of a services-oriented architecture. This is a modern definition of an IT system that integrates information as services rather than attempting to integrate software. 
The authoring tier comprises the specialist users. These specialists are making beautiful visualizations, the maps and globes, and are building geoprocessing functionality, the models. These specialist users are using our desktop products to create map documents and models, which are then authored onto ArcGIS server using Arc Catalog. ArcGIS server then provides the map, globe, and functionality services across an enterprise service bus, the network, so that users throughout the organization can then access those services. ArcGIS Server embeds the core IT standards that define a services-oriented architecture and thus provides a very fundamental level of interoperability with other types of information services provided by other types of servers, such as perhaps an enterprise resource planning or ERP server. So this means that users throughout the enterprise can seamlessly access geographic services in a variety of clients and then readily fuse those geographic services, or in today's terminology, mash up with many other sources of information. So can we use these component and services views of an enterprise GIS to help integrate imagery into this context? I'd argue that it certainly helps, although we need to be very careful to understand some important differences. First of all, image management can't just be integrated into a database context. Put another way, we can't just put an image in front of database and think about image databases in quite the same way we think of geodatabases. That's because the image chain stretches far back to the airborne or satellite sensor that is actually acquiring the image files. And these image files need to be corrected before use. This then goes far beyond the geodatabase context of a standard information model. Imagery can certainly be brought into a geodatabase context, but that only represents one small part of that overall image management area. Image processing is becoming increasingly componentized and can increasingly be integrated into a model builder type of context. But the image processing functions are largely different to geoprocessing functions and many are contained within products from ESRI's extensive range of imagery partners. Image visualization is, of course, largely synonymous with geovisualization. We expect to be able to seamlessly fuse imagery with other geospatial information into 2D and 3D visualization environments. Even specialist visualizations like stereo are increasingly used to display both imagery and feature information. It's perhaps in this process view that the differences become more apparent. After imagery is acquired, it needs to be corrected in order to become usable. These corrections include the removal of radiometric and sensor distortions, as well as orthorectification to overcome terrain-based distortions. These corrections are essential before imagery can be used in a geographic context. In addition, it's only once these corrections have been made that most exploitation activities can be done, such as mosaic or multi-spectral image processing. Many of the exploitation tasks can only be conducted against full-frame files, and these in turn produce image files. So it's not quite as straightforward to just bring everything into a services-oriented architecture context. I think once these differences are understood, it becomes possible to think about an enterprise image information system in terms of infrastructure and then capability. So taking all of those considerations in mind, I have sketched out an architecture diagram here that illustrates how imagery might take its place in a services-oriented architecture. This is a busy diagram, but we're going to take a look at each element in turn and we'll illustrate key points with demonstrations. I'm going to focus on ArcGIS Server first, since that really cuts to the heart of bringing GIS into a SOA or enterprise context. 
you're probably familiar with many of these characteristics of ArcGIS Server. ArcGIS Server is a fully integrated GIS server that can publish GIS services using a range of standards, including REST, SOAP, OGC, and KML. Developers can create web applications so that these can be deployed into browsers. And these developers can use a range of standards, including JavaScript, .NET, and the Java Web ADF. Of course, a number of out-of-the-box applications can access ArcGIS Server. These include ESRI's free ArcGIS Explorer and a range of mobile applications. Desktop applications such as ArcInfo, ArcEditor, and ArcView then provide professional GIS users with the ability to edit, analyze, and ultimately author. ArcGIS Server includes an increasing number of online base maps and GIS services, and these are going to help you kickstart your implementations. And finally, as you'd expect, a full range of tools for geospatial information management are included. Let's quickly put ArcGIS Server into the services context that I described earlier. So specialist users of ArcGIS Desktop are going to create the beautiful maps and globes and build powerful geoprocessing models. Using Arc Catalog, which is one of the desktop applications, these maps, globes, and models can be authored onto ArcGIS Server. The authoring process includes the configuring of the services to define the type of service that's going to be provided. These services are then available to any client across the enterprise. Let's return to the overview diagram, and now we're going to take a look at ArcGIS Image Server on the bottom left. ArcGIS Image Server sits alongside ArcGIS Server to provide some very specific image services. You'll note that we show image files in turquoise sitting alongside the geodatabase. These are the raw or uncorrected image files that have come straight from the sensor. And these are placed, along with supporting sensor information, in a file store that is managed through the geodatabase. This notion of storing these raw, uncorrected files on image server is really important. Since, as you're going to see, the original pixels then stay in one place. This is very different from the traditional image processing flows, where pixels are transferred from file to file to file in linear processes. You'll also notice the orange boxes that are a graphic metaphor for the image processing functions. A variety of image processing functions, things like author rectification and pan sharpening, are run on demand against those raw image files. And this is going to generate just the number of pixels of corrected imagery to satisfy the display needs of the user's visualization. This combination of keeping the raw files on the server and running on-the-fly image processing functions results in the following important characteristics of ArcGIS Image Server. By only processing those pixels needed by the display, the time latency from the sensor to the user can be dramatically reduced. If we look at a traditional image processing flow, every pixel of every huge image file has to be corrected, then written into another huge image file, and ultimately passed to the user. This is clearly a processor-intensive, network-intensive, and time-consuming process. So to author-rectify a typical 4-gig image might take two hours. But with ArcGIS Image Server, we're processing on demand to satisfy, let's say, the visualization needs of a 1024 by 768 display. And this might take just one second and involve a 40-kilobyte image service. I'm sure you'll see that makes a considerable difference. This has a very important side effect. 
Because we don't need to worry about the time and cost of processing every file, we can make every image ever acquired easily available to the user. So rather than the user having to choose the one image that might be a compromise between quality, cloud cover, timeliness, look angle, and time of day, all of the images can be made available to the user so that they can then choose the highest quality or the most cloud free or the latest. You, you get the idea. All of this dramatically reduces the image management burden. Watch the Im user of imagery today. They get the DVD, copy the images onto their hard drive, which will take many minutes. They then rename the files to their local needs. They then have to figure out which one to use, load it into the application. With ArcGIS Image Server, they connect to the service and just use the imagery. Manage centrally once, use many times. You'll see that this final point on the slide become more important a little later. These raw image files on the ArcGIS Image Server can be accessed directly. Just hold that thought. Before we go into the first demonstration, let's look at how it ArcGIS Image Server brings the image processing acquire, correct, exploit chain and the enterprise author, serve, use chains together. When the image is acquired by the sensor, that raw image is being written to a hard drive. And that hard drive is either on board the aircraft or in the ground station in the case of a satellite-based sensor. As Dave's going to show you, the first stage of authoring an image service is to plug that hard drive into the server, not copying anything off the hard drive, just plugging the hard drive in, so that ArcGIS Image Server knows where the raw image files and their supporting data are. The authoring process is then going to define the type of corrections and services that Image Server will provide. This then enables ArcGIS Image Server to serve the appropriate services out into the use and exploit domains, which have now become largely synonymous. So what I want to do now is turn over to my colleague Dave Johnson. He's now going to show how ArcGIS Server and ArcGIS Image Server can be used together to improve a commonly used workflow, extracting features from imagery. In this first demonstration, we're going to focus on the authoring of an image service. So, over to you, Dave. Thank you, David, and hello to all our listeners. Suppose that we are a water management district and we need to map a new subdivision's as-built waterways. This map contains an image service layer over an area that has seen some recent development. In this older image service, you can see where a new subdivision is under construction. We've been notified that this subdivision is now complete, and we need to digitize the as-built waterways. Our waterways layer is stored in the geodatabase, and I'm going to access it through ArcGIS Server. You can now see the existing features that I'm going to be adding to. Let's zoom in for a closer look. In order to start my work, I will need new imagery, as will many other departments in my city. So the GIS manager has ordered a new set of aerial photography, which has just been received in a hard drive from the vendor in this case, a Planex. Now, in a traditional workflow, to digitize the waterways would first involve obtaining the ortho-rectified imagery, typically on a DVD. Before we could put it to use, each user across the city would typically have to spend a considerable amount of time copying the imagery to their hard drives. Alternatively, a central administrator might mosaic the individual images into a single seamless image, which might then be loaded into a database. The first approach would impose a tremendous image management burden on users throughout my organization. 
The second ties up the administrator for a long period of time and creates imagery that is time consuming to update. We're now going to switch to the Enterprise GIS Administrator's workstation in the IT department to show how we can now centrally manage our imagery quickly and easily. The Enterprise GIS Administrator is using ArcGIS Desktop to author the city's image services. This map contains an image service definition. This is the editor component to our image service. Before I can add the new imagery to our service, I must first connect the hard drive we received from Aplanix to our server. The uh, imagery we have received from Aplanix is long focal length imagery. This makes it very useful for precise digitizing of features since it minimizes height related layover problems. That is where buildings and other tall features appear to lean away from the center point of the image. The tools for authoring image services are found in the image service definition editor toolbar of ArcMap. I will now use the add data wizard to add the Aplanix imagery to our service. We begin by indicating the type of imagery we are adding to the service. The ortho rectification category includes several raster types that have the associated files to use for ortho rectifying the imagery. After I select the Aplanix type, I indicate the location of the imagery and the location of those associated files. This is the Aplanix exterior orientation file. Next, I select the folder that contains the raw aerial photographs. Now I define the camera calibration parameters. I'm going to load those from a file and then some ortho rectification parameters, the uh, spatial reference system, the terrain type, which will be a digital elevation model for this data, the average elevation value for the terrain, which is 14 meters, and finally the location of the digital elevation model itself. At this point, the service definition is being rebuilt. This process takes about 11 minutes for the 75 scenes that we are using here. Although this would be painful to sit through right now, it is worth mentioning that this is a considerably shorter time than it would take to ortho rectify imagery in a traditional workflow, probably 150 hours of processing time. So rather than talk for another 11 minutes, we are going to switch over to a service which we prepared earlier. This is the image server manager. Now that the update to the service definition is complete, the final step to the process is to synchronize the running service with the changes that were made to its service definition. To do this, I simply select the service and click the synchronize button. Now the update is complete, so let's return back to the user's desktop. It's important to note that throughout the authoring process, the users were able to continue using the service uninterrupted. This is an important feature of Image Server that can help to keep downtime to an absolute minimum. Now I will draw the newly updated service. Notice that it appears to be unchanged by our updates. That's because we have not yet sent a new request to the service. To do that, I simply pan the map. The service receives the new request, 
and delivers to us the new imagery. So now you can see the more current and higher resolution imagery. We're now ready to start extracting the waterways into ArcGIS server. So I'm going to start an edit session and start extracting the waterway edge. Okay, back to you, David. Great, thank you very much, Dave. So in that demonstration, you saw how ArcGIS Image Server and ArcGIS Server can work together to improve a feature extraction workflow. As stated earlier, we welcome the submission of your questions at any time. While Dave was giving that demo, I've had a chance to look at some of the questions that were submitted earlier. Let's take a look at some of those. Charlotte in Wellington, New Zealand asks, how does the end user know how accurate the imagery is? Is metadata available? It's a great question, and I think it really cuts to the heart of one of the key advantages of ArcGIS Image Server. If you take a look at um, a consumer viewer with imagery in it, you have no idea when that imagery was acquired. You have no idea of the precision of that imagery. Um, what you get is what you see. But in the case of ArcGIS Image Server, the full metadata descriptor of every image is immediately available, and that makes um, the image much more useful. David, also from Wellington, asks, if you have no DTM, how can you define a service for newly acquired aerial photography? If you're doing auto-rectification on the fly, you need a DTM. There is no choice. That's an essential input into the auto-rectification process. But remember that ArcGIS Image Server can serve out already auto-rectified imagery. It's one of the options, and ArcGIS Image Server actually does that really well. So in that particular case, if you don't have a DTM, you would just order auto-rectified imagery from your provider. You can still use ArcGIS Image Server to do image processing, things like stretches or pan sharpening and so on. So there is still an advantage. Paul from Chicago says, you mentioned OGC, but where does WMS or web mapping service fit into this enterprise paradigm? Well, under that OGC category, I'm including the web mapping service, the web feature service, and the web catalog service, all of which can be served from ArcGIS Image Server and ArcGIS Server. So that's all the questions we can take right now. Please keep submitting them. We've got another two answer sessions coming up later. Let's get back to our architecture diagram and next look at the product appliance. A product appliance addresses one of the challenges of imagery, which is how to manage the many existing image product files that may be a legacy of older image processing systems. In addition, older applications in our organization might only be able to use image product files. So we may need to continue to generate these files, as illustrated by the blue file metaphors hanging over our clients. The product appliance provides an environment in which to store and manage these image product files, and thus make them accessible to modern services-oriented architecture clients as well as older applications. But first, let's define what an appliance is. An appliance is a device that sits on the network doing one thing and doing it really well. In the case of the product appliance, this is a device that serves high performance, scalable maps and globes to satisfy visualization needs. So it serves background map wallpaper fast. 
So to emphasize that point, a product appliance has ArcGIS Server inside. In this particular case, ArcGIS Server is optimized to serve maps and globes fast and widely. The original product files are stored in a file store that is managed through the geodatabase. As new products are added, a loading application looks after the replacement of older versions and importantly updates the 2D and 3D caches in the geodatabase that are then going to be used to provide the high performance and scalable map and globe services. Older applications that perhaps can't access services can now access these product files directly or through a catalog whilst more modern applications access the services through REST, SOAP, OGC, or KML. Now, we're going to turn to the client tier. I'm going to divide the client tier into image access clients and high-end image processing clients. Let's first look at the image access clients. These are the clients that need to access image services for viewing, feature extraction, and information fusion, or mashups. Image access clients can include any application that can consume services. So these might include browsers, Google Earth clients, the free ArcGIS Explorer, ArcGIS desktops, mobile applications, or OGC-based clients. These clients that are accessing image services are where the main integration of imagery with other services, like, for example, GIS services, is going to occur. So if you like, we can mash up image services with a wide range of other services. This enables collaborative work to be performed against imagery, as illustrated by the green arrows. This notion of collaboration is going to greatly enhance our image-based workflows throughout our organization. You'll notice that depending on the type of client, image product files can be generated, as illustrated by the blue file metaphor hovering over each of the clients. So we might want to produce, let's say, an image map with a grid, graticule, and marginalia. This product file can be saved out to the product appliance where it can be managed and made available as a service to other users. Finally, let's turn to that mysterious orange box that's probably been puzzling you. This is a metaphor for the high-end image processing clients that might be required to perform specialist image processing functions. These specialist image processing functions might include things like multispectral or hyperspectral image processing, where we want to combine pixels from different bands of imagery. These bands might represent different colors or frequencies of reflected light. ESRI has no intention of getting into specialist areas like this. We don't need to, since we have an unrivaled range of image partners that pour all of their knowledge and passion into these niche areas. But what we do want to ensure is that the infrastructure we've defined can enable these partners to integrate their products and workflows into the enterprise. You'll recall that earlier I mentioned the storage of those raw image files in Image Server. That becomes very significant now we're looking at these high-end image processing clients since most of these need to conduct processing against these original pixels. They can't always process against a service. So one of these high-end image processing clients might in the first instance connect to an ArcGIS image server image service to figure out the optimum raw image file to use for their work, their processing task. They can then either establish a direct connect to that file in the file store or make a copy for local use. 
ESRI has a wide range of image processing partners that together provide an unrivaled range of image processing functions. This is one of the great things about a services-oriented architecture in that it enables you to select the best of breed for each capability area. So an organization you can just go ahead and select the best hyperspectral image processing capability, secure in the knowledge that it's going to integrate tightly into their enterprise infrastructure. The key here is that any of those results of high-end image processing can either be committed back into the geo database through our GIS server in order to be made available throughout the organization. And if image product files are required, these can be placed into the product appliance for access by both services-oriented architecture clients and legacy applications. In this first topic, we've explored how imagery can be integrated into the enterprise. We've explored an architecture diagram to understand what an enterprise image information system might look like. We've delved into a little bit of detail about each of the components. And then Dave Johnson gave that demo that illustrated how to author an image service to support a traditional feature extraction workflow. We've had several more questions submitted. Thank you. Let's work through some of these. Chris from Walnut Creek asks, how do I integrate a third party WMS or web mapping service service? Again, it's one of the nice things about a services oriented architecture is that Clients are able to mash up from a variety of different service definitions. So you're going to be able to overlay your WMS service over, um, let's say, an image service. Charlie from Great Lakes asks, are ortho-rectified and geo-rectified concepts the same thing? Yes, ortho-rectification is perhaps the more correct um, definition. Um, you often hear the term georeference. Georeference may not be the same thing as orthorectified because that may just be the loose fitting of an image based on perhaps a center point. So orthorectified means something very specific, which is that each pixel in your display can be correctly identified in real world coordinates. That might not necessarily be the case with a georeferenced image. Ingrid from Germany had asked, I just want an image like Google Earth gives me. I'm, I'm not concerned about aerial triangulation and so on, um, and, and all the, the complexities you're talking about. Is, isn't this all too much for me? It depends whether you're a user of imagery or the specialist who's authoring those image services. As a user, you just get the image you want. No fuss, no complexity except that you can now say, yeah, but I want an older image, or I want an image with a different look angle. So you really get to define the precise image that you want. But of course, you best hope that the person, the specialist who's authoring the service is fully aware of the complexities of imagery to make sure that you do indeed get just the image you want. Okay, let's move on. And please keep, can, keep submitting questions. In the first topic, we looked at this architecture. What I want to do now is, is look in more detail at how we might take advantage of other ArcGIS image server characteristics to improve our feature extraction workflows. Whilst we only have time to explore this one aspect of bringing imagery into the enterprise, similar benefits can be found in many other workflows. In his first demonstration, Dave had illustrated this workflow that you see in this diagram. So you'll recall that he'd used the ArcGIS desktop in its authoring role to author a service from ArcGIS image server. He'd then switched to the user perspective and then used the ArcGIS desktop in an editing role 
to extract features and commit them through ArcGIS server into the geodatabase. But in order to prepare for the second demonstration, we need to just take a closer look at a couple of other issues, height distortions and image precision. Since height distortions are going to play such an important role in the next demonstration, I'm going to use this diagram to illustrate the impact of height, in this case of a building, in imagery. So here you can see an aircraft taking a near vertical image of a red building and a green building. You can see that the camera can observe one side or the one side of the building that's closest to the camera. The result is, of this is that when you see the resulting image, those buildings are going to appear to lay over away from the camera, away from the center of the image. Yet, if we're digitizing, we want to collect the bottom of the building, the footprint of the building. You can also appreciate that the top of the building appears larger than the bottom of the building because it's closer to the camera, slightly closer to the camera. Yet, when we're digitizing, again, we want to capture the size of the building on the ground. We're going to show you in the next demonstration how we can take advantage of ArcGIS Image Server in order to overcome these digitizing challenges. In this next demonstration, Dave is going to be extracting building footprints at a large scale. This is going to necessitate a higher degree of precision than could be derived from just the sense of position and look angle. We need to bring ground control in. This involves an aerial triangulation process. This is a time-consuming process and not something we're going to cover today. And that process by third-party software is going to provide each raw image with more precise supporting data. This diagram explains that precursor to authoring the service. The graphic on the left shows the geometric precision of a pixel and image that is derived purely from the position of the camera and its attitude or point angle. If that raw image is fed into an aerial triangulation application, along with ground control derived from field survey work, the result is that that ground control is applied to identifiable pixels within the image. These identifiable pixels can then be used to anchor the whole of the raw image by adjusting the image support data. This has the effect of dramatically improving the geometric precision of each pixel in a subsequent image service. The point of mentioning this is to expose the inherent flexibility of ArcGIS Image Server, the ability to author different types of service depending on the needs of the user. Suffice to say that that aerial triangulation process was time consuming, but it would have been required as a precursor to traditional author rectification anyway. The time latency is therefore still going to be compressed using ArcGIS Image Server, just not quite as dramatically overall as in that first demonstration. So I'm now going to hand back over to Dave for the final demonstration that's going to help um, illustrate some of these points. Dave, over to you. Thank you, David. In this next example, we are playing the role of a city taxation department in the city of Amberg in southern Germany. A new building has been erected and we are going to extract the building's footprint in order to calculate tax rates. The map of Europe that we are viewing is actually a map service which is published through ArcGIS server. We also have an image service layer for the city of Amberg. Let's zoom to it now. Note the much lower resolution overview imagery at the edges of my display. This is from our map service from ArcGIS server. The higher resolution imagery in the center is from a series of raw aerial photos that are being orthorectified on the fly by image server. As I zoom in further, we'll now switch on the building footprints we have already collected. 
you will notice that the building footprints don't appear to match the building roofs that you can see. What you're seeing is one of the challenges of extracting features from imagery, namely the layover of tall objects away from the center of the image. This is an illustration of the height distortions that David explained earlier. I will now zoom in a little further and start an edit session in order to capture the footprint of this new building. As I digitize the footprint of this building, we're going to show how ArcGIS Image Server can take advantage of this layover effect to more easily digitize its footprint. As we do this, keep your eyes on the existing footprints that you're concerned about, and you'll see how the bases of the buildings are indeed precise. And keep in mind as I digitize this building that I need to capture the point where the walls meet the ground. As I reach this corner, I can no longer see the base of the building. However, as I have alluded to, I can reorder the image service from ArcMap by prioritizing the available imagery based on look angle using the viewpoint tool. And I see the viewpoint tool isn't in my toolbar at the moment, so if you'll just give me a moment here. I'm going to add it. Just bear with me here. There we go. Now everything is right. This out of the box tool allows me to specify which look angle to use from all available imagery. I'll click on the button at the top so we can view this building from the north and continue digitizing. Now I'm going to change the look angle again so I can more clearly see this next corner. As I refresh the view, take a look at the opposite side of the building and see just how far the roof of the building is laying over the base. And finally, I complete my polygon and save my edits into the geodatabase. Now back to you, David. Hey, thanks, Dave. So what we saw in that demo was the flexibility of ArcGIS Image Server and being able to serve a range of image services that can be tailored to the needs of the user. And specifically, Dave illustrated the use of a higher precision image service that was derived from that external aerial triangulation process. We saw how the look angle tool can take advantage of the stack of all images being available to overcome the challenge of building layover. And this was another illustration of ArcGIS image server and ArcGIS server working together to make a more effective feature extraction workflow. So overall today, we've shown you how we think that imagery will fit into an enterprise context. And I think we've been able to show you some real advantages of adopting this approach. We've had a few more um, questions from you. Thank you for those. So Jamil from Lansing says, to use the look angle tool, does an image have to be shot from each of those angles? The point here is that it's not that the camera is pointing in that direction. Each of those images was acquired from a near vertical perspective. But those images each overlap. And if you think about the context of the overlap of that imagery, I think you'll see that effectively the image shows um, the, the building layover. It's not that the camera pointed in that direction. It's just that that edge of that image appears to look in that direction. 
In order to take advantage of that, you need to acquire images that have a 60% fore and aft overlap and a 60% side to side overlap. Jeremy from Portland asks, are the files stored in a traditional file directory hierarchy with just the path to the, to the file stored in the geodatabase? Yes, but remember that the other critical thing that is stored in the geodatabase are the image support files, the, the, the attributes that are going to help control those um, processes to generate the orthorectified imagery. Jerry from Houston asks another good question. Do I understand correctly that I can view an orthorectified image without having to save one permanently because the service, is a, the service accomplishes orthorectification on the fly? Absolutely, that's exactly what you're doing. So ArcGIS Image Server is doing an orthorectification and it's able to do it very quickly since it's doing at the level of resolution needed by the display not necessarily the level of resolution of that original image file. And Ibrahima from Reading says, is it possible to serve images in a time series for change analysis? Absolutely yes. Because every image ever acquired over an area is available in that stack of images on ArcGIS Image Server, we can reorder those in a number of ways. The look angle tool was reordering by preferred or closest look angle. Typically, the default would be that it would order with the latest image on top. But that's then great because we can now say, show me all of the images in every time slice ever taken. And you can then quickly look through those, not only to understand what change has occurred, but when that change took place. That can be quite important. OK, so thank you for those questions. Before we go, I'd like to point you to a few more resources. And I noticed a few more questions going through that we didn't have time to answer. And I think these resources are going to point you at some of the answers you're seeking. First is free web training. You can go to virtual campus and take a number of free courses, including the introduction to ArcGIS Image Server that many of you might find useful. ESRI conducts a wide range of instructor-led training, and our distributors also if you're um, overseas. And these include introduction to ArcGIS Image Server. There's a great ESRI press book called Remote Sensing, for GIS managers by Stan Aronoff. This is going to go into considerably more detail about imagery, remote sensing, and image processing techniques. And then you'll see a number of online resources there at the bottom of this slide. We take your comments very seriously because these help us improve our seminars. So can you please take a moment to complete our survey? If you just click the give us feedback link, you can take that survey online. We hope that you enjoyed today's seminar. And on behalf of ESRI, I'd like to thank you all for attending.